Assalamualaikum brothers and sisters, welcome back to Christianity Visa Islam. Obviously it's not a debate here, we're just showing the differentiation between Islam and Christianity. Musa, tell me about the Trinity. Why doesn't it make sense? Okay, now I want to address this from a completely logical perspective inshallah. inshallah. Now, what Christians believe in regards to the Trinity is, if you don't know already, is that three is one, one is three. Jesus is uh, the Son of God, He's part of the Trinity. The Holy Spirit is part of the Trinity as also a part of God. And the Father is also part of the Trinity as part of God. So it's God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Now, why does this not make sense? If all three of them are God, obviously God, all of them are going to be equal gods, right? Then they're not going to be like one's going to be bigger than the other, or one's going to be smaller than the other. If one is a God, one is all powerful, one is, you know, all, you know, sus you know, sustains everything, stuff like that. So they're all going to be the all powerful. Now, why does this not make sense? Because if you think of any company or any manager, right at the top, right, you're going to have one all powerful manager that decides, yeah? yeah. You're going to have one Steve Jobs, you're going to have one, you know, whoever, yeah? Bill Gates. Yeah, one Bill Gates, <laughs> one uh, Larry Hoover. <laughs> 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 yeah, we're going to have one manager, yeah, right at the top. So. Who's Larry Hoover? Don't worry, carry on. Okay. Wait a word. Yeah. <laughs> You're gonna have one guy right at the top, basically, yeah? yeah. Because if there's more than one guy right at the top, the guy uh, one, one's gonna say, okay, paint the ceiling red in the restaurant. One's gonna say, paint the ceiling yellow. One's gonna say, paint it white. Yeah. So there's gonna be conflict. So. If you're going to have three separate gods that all have different wills, there's going to be a complete chaos on the earth. And this is exactly the Quran's argument for, you know, there only being one God in Surah Baqarah. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala states, paraphrasing of course, that if there was more than one God ruling our universe, there would be chaos and destruction on the land. And this is exactly true. Why? Because we just established that if there was more than one manager in a restaurant or in a shop running that, and who had all power for all, all power over that restaurant? Yeah. It would be chaos. Yeah, no, because you know they're gonna conflict at one point. Yeah, that's true. Logically, when we look at it, we're like, yeah, what you're saying is right. But what Christians that um, do is that they're like, okay, you're thinking of God with logic. You know, less you cannot, you know, your imagination can't handle that. We yeah. say, okay, all right, that's cool. Because what you're saying is makes sense. But to them, they're like, nah. Let's go to the scriptures. Now, in John chapter 17, verse 3, it clearly says, this is their own scripture, right? It says, the true God whom you know, and the one who, uh, the one that sent Jesus. Right, so they're over there in the scriptures, basically saying, there's one true God, and Jesus Christ whom he sent, right? If you think about this, yeah, if Jesus is God, you know, did he send himself? You know, like he said, like, and if you look at a logical manner, it doesn't make sense. Not only that, in the scriptures of Christianity, Jesus went up to the Jews, the Israelites, and said, Hear, O Israel, our Lord God is one. The first commandment. Yes, the, one of the first commandments. He said, Our Lord is one. Now, this is really, really important. There's Jesus saying the most important thing, Trinity is the whole basement of Christianity. Why, why didn't he go and say, Guys, Hear, O Israel, our Lord is three in one. He didn't say that. He said one. Now, if you look into different, uh, some Christians come and say, wait, hold on a second. Jesus said, I'm Alpha and Omega. And he goes, that makes him God. And I'm like, okay, right, that's cool. Well, let's not be double standards and let's put that to the test. In the book of Hebrews, chapter seven, verse three, it talks about Melchizedek. And it talks about this Melchizedek as having no father, no mother, no beginning and no end. So that clearly means he's Alpha and Omega, no beginning, no end. He has no father, just like Jesus, but on top of that, he's one level ahead because he goes, he has no mother. Now, would it be fair if we said to Christians, well, he's God too? It wouldn't make sense, you know? That's why we're trying to think, even in one of the commandments, I think it's the second commandment, where God is saying to, to the people, right? In one of the commandments, it says, thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in the heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. So God is saying nothing in this universe is me. Now Jesus walked the earth, right? So it clearly shows that he's not God. Not only that, in the book of uh, Numbers chapter 23, verse 19, I think, uh, I'm not quite sure. It, it clearly says, God is not a man. 
he's not a man. So you can clearly see in the scriptures, it clearly says that. And Jesus himself said, I in my own self can do nothing. As I see, I judge. And my judgment is just because I do not seek my will, but the will of my father. Anybody that says I do not seek my will, but the will of my father is a Muslim. It's as simple as that. Even the hour, they asked Jesus, they came and said, when is the hour? He said, I do not know. Not the angels in heaven. Nobody knows except the father. In the Quran, it says the same thing. Look, you know, the, the fact yeah. of the matter is, yeah, is that even if you're going to put any logical perspective on the Bible, yeah? yeah. Me personally, I actually believe Christianity is one of the main reasons that yeah. atheism is spreading all over the world right now. Yes. Because it does not make sense at all. Yeah. God would not send us a message, humans, a message that does not make sense. He yeah. would only send us a message that makes sense to us because yeah. obviously he wants us to follow him. Yeah. So, fact of the matter is, when Jesus went in Matthew to the Garden of Gethsemane, yeah. who's he praying to when he bowed down? He fell on his all face All of these prayed. questions come. Yeah, you need, to, you need to answer that to yourself. You need to know, we're not here to attack your religion. What we're trying to say, think of it. Jesus went and prostrated Ooh. and prayed. If he's God, who did he pray to? You know, that's our message. Hope you guys benefited. It's hailing. It's hell so <laughs> man. So, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Peace to the brothers that are not Muslim. If you want to get in touch, learn more about Islam, please contact us. It's your brother Omar Isa. I have a request for you to subscribe to Young Dawa, to like Young Dawa on Facebook, and follow Young Dawa on Twitter. It's a great youth movement for Dawa.